Champion Tommy Langford. Tommy, mate, welcome to Fight Them, mate. Sam, mate. Uh, start off, congratulations on your, uh, your win on the weekend, beating Jack Armfield. Um, how did you think that fight went for you? Well, um, Armfield, to be fair to me and uh, but me and both Armfield, like we're both underrated in our, in in the, the in public circles. Really, we thought of highly in boxing in the boxing circles, but the public don't really have, don't really know of us, so it was easy my mandatory challenger issued by the board. So he was I knew going in he was gonna be a good boxer. You know, he was a good stand up boxer. It was um, I had to, it was very important to get the tactic right and to stick to the game plan in this fight. If you know if you don't get it right with Armfield he can make you look he can he can make things very awkward and and he can nick rounds, he's got a good long jab and he can make things hard for you that way and you know obviously he's got two good scabs on his record against Ryder and Brian Rose and he's you know, got a WBA, he's ranked number 7 in the WBA or was and number 7 in the, in the IBF so I knew going in it was going to be a good boxing match and so that was the most important thing to stick to my boxing and to stick to the game plan and Tom Chaney laid out a brilliant plan yeah, um, a and uh, you know it, against someone tall who's, who's got a good jab like he has them, if you can make him fall short and use your feet, which I've always got good feet, but I've neglected them in recent years and stuff. I've always had that's always been an attribute of mine, my feet and speed and things. And it's for whatever reason, it's got it, it went out really for a bit, but we brought it back in and really focused on it for this camp because it was vital. And early on in the the fight, you know, they were close rounds, but I always felt in complete control yeah. of what I was doing and everything I was doing. It was, it was by my design, and uh, you know, so that makes you feel more confident, more relaxed, more comfortable, and going. And then, you know, I was making him fall short early, and you know, punishing probably with singles early on. And then, as the fight went on, you know, Tom said, "Look, look now, he's reaching now, you know, because he couldn't get me with this, with this, so he's reaching with his punches. So you've got to punish it now, and punish it with numbers. And as soon as I started racking the numbers up from sort of round six, round seven yeah. onwards." The fight, the fight went away from him, and it come completely into my realms. And I could see, you can see things facially, and you know the frustrations. He's shaking his arms out, and you could see like he didn't really know, didn't really know what to do with me because he couldn't, because what he thought I was going to do didn't happen. And you know when you break someone's mental game plan, a mental, when when you break them mentally, it, the physical part and the boxing part is really. It's quite easy to get right, yeah, well, but as long as you stick. But that's that was the. So I'm very pleased with it, person on a personal front because although I've won, you know, won the British title before, and um, you know, obviously won Commonwealth and Continentals and things like that. I haven't. Um, I've won them, and I've won them on poor performances, really, having neglected a game plan or gone off track or not stuck to something. So. The fact that I stuck to it and stuck to the, the instruction, and it made the fight very comfortable for me, and like, and I, that's the most. Thing, that's the thing I'm very happy with. And knowing I've done that now for that fight, it gives you more confidence to go into the next one and be completely relaxed and completely flow behind the tactic again. And so like, I'm I'm relishing it really and really looking forward to getting back back in the ring and, and doing another. Another, um, you know, good boxing job on, on somebody. Well, I watched. I, I didn't watch the fight on the night because I was I was at another show. I watched it the day after, mm. and uh, got to say, exactly how you just said it. The first six rounds, it it was up to. I had I had you winning most of them, but it that's was the a thing. Pick and the, one, the, it was when up when, when there's rounds like that, and you've got when you when there's rounds like that, and you've got somebody who's like Armfield, who's got that lung jab, and they can they can they can steal rounds. So it was really important not to 
get yeah. over eager and try and chase it because he would have just picked me with a jab. Yeah. So I had to be very patient early on. I think the patience it proved to his downfall because it and and you know making him fall short with his punches meant that I could get the cleaner work off. And, and so often in those rounds when it's like that, it's who looks the more dominant or who looks the more comfortable yeah. in the round. And I think all throughout the fight, but in particular early on, he his aroma and, 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 and you know his features and he looked a bit confused, whereas I looked very comfortable. Oh, no, you did look very you know, so yeah. I think that you know when the judges are looking and things, it, it sways them. But like I always felt, I was going back to the corner. I knew the rounds that were close. Uh, or that I maybe lost, and I lost them. The rounds I lost, I give up because of something I did. And so when you when you know that going back to the corner, you don't have to be told off, yeah. or you don't have to be say watch out for that. Because I went back to the corner when I did that wrong. Then look, and you, and you know you've done something wrong. It's very easy to eradicate it when it should be. And then so the next round you go out and you stamp your authority again. You win the next round back. But when you when you go back and you're clueless as to how you've lost the round, that's when panic starts setting, and or you yeah. think this ain't going the way I thought it was going to go panic starts setting in and, and your frustration and then that's when you get tired and that's when you start snatching at things and the fact that I, even when I maybe lost the round I came back comfortable to say like yeah I lost that but it's my fault I did yeah. this and then I could get back to back to the flow then you know then you switch back onto the tactic and so yeah yeah I was very I'm very pleased with it and you know and um, it's like I said it's mandatory so I had to you know one of them had to be done couldn't avoid it and um I'm, I'm, I'm happy with the way I dealt with it, you know, I had comfortably beaten a man that's a challenger, yeah, which is, is you did, good thing. I must admit, look, after, the, after the first six who looked, looked close, you did take control, and by the end you, you were flowing, you, you yeah. looked really good, your movement like, was really good uh, coming, as, as you come through to the end. Yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah. So, is that that's your first defence? That's my first defence, and like it, it's been a frustrating period because he's been my manager challenger since June last year, and um, there's been several things that have gone on um, that have fallen through and whatever and things like this. I was hoping, obviously, really hoping to get at least two defences <laughs> last year. You know, in my eye, in my mind, I've had this belt for nearly 18 months. I feel like that really, in the time scale, should be my third defence. Yeah. But obviously things have happened the way they've happened, and um, you know, so I've got to. So it's, it's frustrating, but I've managed to start 2018 with on a positive, you know, a positive front, really good performance and a big show, loads of exposure, and you know, I can move on, move on from here now because I've had it for so long. You know, I don't really want to get bogged down with domestic fights, and um, you know, don't get me wrong. I'd love to win the Lonsdale belt, right? I'd love. It's a beautiful belt. Yeah, I was you know, I'm so question. I'm so proud to have it and proud to be an owner of it, and of, you know, and things like this. But at the same time, it can really stall your career. Yeah. If you look at fighters who have who, who have moved on from the British without defending outright, they've gone on quite quickly to significant fights and fight, to be financially a lot better off. Than just if they're staying and defending the British, and you know, you don't get no younger. I mean, oh, I don't want to wait another 18 months to get two more defences in and just be sticking around at domestic. You know, yeah. within 18 months, I want to be back up where I, I've, I want to be, and you know, and so if the chance, if the chance is there to do two quick voluntaries and defend it and own it outright, 100%, I'll do it, and and I, and I want to do it, but if if I get delayed and stalled and the opportunities aren't there to do the do the defences, you know, I wanna push on and I wanna move I wanna move myself and improve my career and up to the next level and obviously the next significant level is European. Um, and that's that's something I want, I want, I want to target. One, one question I'd like to ask you, like, just on the domestic mm -hmm. funds, right? Like, yeah, you wanna move to Europe and say say you got one more voluntary yeah. um would it be get against one of the local lads, say Craig Cunningham, who, who you were meant yeah. to buy at one stage, um, Andrew Robinson, because every time we talk to Andrew, he's always been um, hanging on about buying yeah. you, and uh, a fellow bag eh? yeah, Jason yeah. Well, well, um, well, would you would you would you like one of them? For starters, is I've got no issues with fighting any one of them. You know, I'm very confident of beating every single every one of them, and and. Boxing, but 
it's, and none of them would be bad fights for me. The thing is, it's like where it is, you know, those fights are sellable in the Midlands, but they're Midlands. Like, I'm not being, who, you know, Craig Cunningham has had the best win out of a lot of them being Anthony Gogo. But then, unfortunately for Craig, he lost, his, he lost in a Commonwealth Eliminator in his last fight. And so, like, that puts you right back down the pecking order. Andy Robinson can bang on about me all, the, all he wants, but I beat someone who beat him. You know, at the end of the day, he hasn't done anything since then. But he's fighting for an IBO. I know, he's, fight, he's fight. fighting Craig for it, isn't he? Or he was? No, no, Craig, Craig's, uh, well, that, that's been um, put to one side. He's oh, fighting Nick, Nick Gemman for uh, oh. the IBO. Oh, Nick, I beat Nick Gemman in my fifth fight by a knockout in the second round. So, like, you know, this is, this is, you know, this is the this is the levels. They can call me out and say what they want all along, and and that's fine. And I've got no quarrel to fight him and give him a volunteer. But I don't even know if if Craig Craig would be a, a viable opponent at the moment. He's within the top ten in uh, in Britain. Robinson's not. Um, I don't know where Wellborn is. He might be on the verge. In fairness, Wellborn had a good win against Morrison. Can't knock him for that. Um, no matter what I think about Morrison being overhyped and the rest of it, you've got to say fair play, won the fight. Um, I don't know where it comes from that is an Albion fan though. To be honest, I've never seen it on the ground. So I'm down there every game, I don't know. I don't, where, I don't did, know. So someone mentioned I don't know, I don't know where I don't know where that comes from. But um I, Errol Johnson didn't even know he's a West Brom fan that was his manager. So huh. I don't really know where that but anyway, but regardless of all that, I'd be happy to fight any single every single any any one of them on any day of the week, any given time. There's as far as I'm concerned, I'm very confident. But and and in fairness, like because Craig was it was due to fight me. Yeah, it's a shame. That it's a shame it never happened well, we, for Birmingham. I do understand. It's a shame it never happened for Birmingham and all that sort of thing. You know, if he can get himself a decent win and get back, because he, because when you lost, when it doesn't make no sense to me to fight someone who just lost in a Commonwealth Eliminator. Yeah, he's um, do you know fighting, what I mean? Fighting in an eight round in Germany. Yeah, yeah. He's he's got a not a bad lad to be fair in that one. That is a good fighter. The kid who's fighting him so picks up a win there. You know, that's a good. That'd be a good scout for him. Do you know what I mean? So you know, we'll see how that, we'll see how things pan out. I, 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 I don't, I don't want to slag off fellow fighters because we're all in it together, like, and we all have to make the best out of it. But people have to realise, you know, where they are. Like Andrew Robinson. What was he? What did he? What did he, he won a Midlands title. Like in, apart from that, he's lost out when he stepped up. He'll beat Nicky. Well, he should beat Nicky Jemmer. Should beat Nicky Jemmer. Um, but we'll see, because he's been out for quite a while. Well, Joe German's had two good wins recently. I, I know he has, but he still should beat him, knowing yeah. what I know about him and that thing. You know, and then, what, like I said, well won't come off a decent win, and it sells, but it's where it sells, and is it, is it worth, you know, if I get put on a show in London, does me fighting another Brummie or a Midlander if they sell, do you know what I mean? So, like, I put, uh, doesn't really sell um, on that on that front. So if a show comes up in the Midlands, each one of them will be in for a show, and it's who's on the best form at that time. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I've got to pick the I've got to pick the ones that are gonna sell the best for me and do the most for me as a champion. But I don't want to, you know, what's it gonna do to me fighting somebody who's been beat by so and so or so and so? I need to fight people who are gonna project me and make me better, and you know, and 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 that's where I'm at. You know, I've I've done what I've I've done my I've done what I've had to do. If I fight voluntary, I want to fight somebody. No, I'm not saying I want to fight someone who's good, but it's going to portray me in the right manner, going to going to push me on, and, and in in in, the, in people's minds, and or fighting somebody who's been off the radar or who's lost their last fight and things. It doesn't get talked about that well. You got to fight someone who's coming off a winning. You got to fight somebody, someone who's coming in from wins. You know who's you know themselves. You know, like look at the Armfield fight on paper. Look like, at the bookies. That was a 50-50. And it makes me look that much better beating somebody in a 50-50 yeah. because you know he come off the back of the Brian Rose win and the uh, John Ryder win, and so it's excelled his um, profile. You know, so I got to look for fighters who are coming off the back of decent wins like that and to to to, to project me more. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So really, you're looking at moving into into the European. Yeah, I've I've I've, not, I've made no. Um, I'm not never lied and said I've, I've said all along if the opportunity come for me to push on I'll push on I don't want to hold my feet and stick around and waste some of my best years as a fighter I've always, I've always said that in every interview I've done and um, 
So yeah, if the opportunity is there, I mean, like the the Armfield was ranked number four in the in in e, the EBU in the European ratings. So well, beating him, I should be up in and around, not far off a mandatory. And if you look at the box, I know box rec doesn't mean anything, but I'm above the I'm above all the other fighters, bar Martin Murray in the European rankings, and he's fighting uh, he's fighting uh, Billy Joe. So he, that takes him out of the European scene. So the, the champions now, this Polish fella. Zermeta. Yeah, just won he just week. won on Friday. You know, the good win. Knockout. Yeah, good win against the, that uh, Alessandro Gotti. But like, I mean, I watch Gotti. I, I can't. It's hard to find footage on him against relevant, against decent opponents. They've all fought a lot of unknowns, if you know what I mean, um, in that side of Europe. So. Because he's undefeated, 17 and 0, you know, it's a relatively dangerous fight, but he's got the European title, so that is a target for me. So if we can push on and do that, then I'll do that. The other angle I'm looking at is the fact that, like, in terms of world rankings, Armfield was WBA number 7 and the IBF number 7, so beating him should jump me up in either one of them. Obviously, I'm not going to over jump my mark and say I want to fight Kennedy Golovkin, yeah. who's the IBF and the WBA super champion. You know, I'm not stupid. You know, however much it depends on the money, but like that, nah, <laughs> nah, but no, no. On a serious note, I'm not, I'm not ridiculous. But you know, the WBA regular champions, Murata, the interim title's vacant. You know, if if I can, you know, stay in and around the fringe world level. You know, having having beat Armfield, if I can keep knocking around there, you know, you might be given a shot, or I might project myself and you know, beat the right person at the right time. You're up there. And you've got a shot at the world title yourself, at, at a version of the world title, and and then then you're in the door, you know. Like the reality is, with Golovkin fighting Canelo in May, um, obviously I think Golovkin will win, but you fight Canelo in Vegas, where you know, and I thought he won the last one. To be fair, I didn't, you know, I, I didn't see it as a draw. So whatever happens in that fight, the likeness is by the end of this year, oh, they'll either be a unified champion because Golovkin might fight Billy Joe. If, Golo if Canelo wins that fight, don't see Canelo fight Billy Joe. Canelo can do what he wants because he's such a big ticket seller. He's such a big seller in America, pay-per-view-wise and that. He doesn't have to fulfill mandatories. He'll pick a title. He'll defend one belt. He won't be as well. He might be, but I don't think he'll be bothered about staying a unified champion and the rest of it. And so then the belt source gets scattered around. If Golovkin wins, I believe that he will fight Billy Joe, and there will be a unification fight. So by the end of the year, we might have a unified middleweight champion, which is fantastic for the division. You know, and and depending on what happens from there, they're going to have to move on. Whoever wins, whoever is that person at the end of the day, is going to have to move on to new and higher, harder grounds in order to make themselves a megastar. Or, you know, what, why would they? They've made mega bucks. Do you know what I mean? So if you're in and around it. When those belts get released and things and stuff, you can be in the shop for in in, in the shop window for a, a, a world title shot, and, and that's where I want to be. You know, I'm not, I'm not, I don't feel like I know I lost in the first chance at world level, you know, but that was world level. He's a world level punch. He was ranked number eight in the Ring magazine, but world world rankings, uh, you know, that uh, Kurt Zidze, and I know I lost to him, but I was winning the fight. I know I can compete technically, boxing wise, with the best out there. All it is is mentally again being strong enough on a day. In that fight, I wasn't mentally strong enough, and I didn't stick to the game plan, and that's why I got caught. And when you get caught by a world-class puncher, that's unfortunately that's what happens. Happens so, in a fight. So this last fight has like actually showed you that you can. You can oh stick yeah, to the game we've plan. really, really, really worked on the mental side of fighting. Not so much mental strength out, you know, people talking rubbish to you, because it all goes and you know that goes off as water for ducks back. Like when. Your mental strength within a fight has been something that we've really worked on, keeping me from going off a game plan. And we've worked on it, and sparring and sparring, and drilled it and drilled it and drilled it. And I've proved to myself in the gym I can do it. And I know I can, and I've proved myself several times in the gym I can do it against top level operators. And then it was a case of have to just do it in the ring. And I did it in the ring against Armfield, and now I know I can fulfill it. And I can get better and better and better at it. And so, like, I know now that when I get up to that level that requires that mental strength, uh, you know, world level and the way, that discipline, I know I can deliver it. And so I'm confident to get back up there now 
obviously I've got to work my way back up there, I can't just jump in and things, which is why it'd be nice to go down the route of the European and knock off knock off a few, you know, on the way up. But, you know, th that that's the goal and that's the goal for any fighter, but that's the goal for me, you know, and financially it's the best place to be, you know, fight wise and things. So, you know, that's that that's what that's where that's where I'm at really and that's where my head's at and I know that's where my team, you know, wanna go. So We'll see, but like I said, if the opportunity isn't there, then I've got the, I've got the British title. And yeah. The British title's not going anywhere, but I'm off my shoulder. Do you know what I mean? Well, do you know what? I'd love to see you yeah. um, like defend that and own it outright. But I can understand if you move on and move up, and yeah. if you get those I mean, chances. When you look at you know fellow Midland fighters and things like look Macklin. You know, he won the British title and he immediately he beat Alcock and immediately vacated. And look at he had three four world title you know, three world title shots. He won the European title. You know, he had the shots at things like that. So that's and then Martin Murray the same, he won the British and then give it up. They didn't do a defence, they then they give it up. Eubank did it as well, didn't they? Well Eubanks Eubank had me as his mandatory and dodged it, didn't he? Yeah. So there you go, you know. He, he done it, but then look what you Eubank's got on it. I mean, it just shows that all along when I'm saying that he couldn't box. I've, and I'm not saying that Eubank isn't dangerous in the way he fights because he's fit and he's strong, but he's just not good enough boxer. Do you, do you fancy him against him? Yeah? Well, mate, I'm still, I ain't got no money from the first time I was supposed to fight him. He was all signed and sealed and then and he, he pulled out and left me without a big payday. So. I ain't dealing with him now. He can do one, and you know that he can earn his stripes to get back. And you know, the thing is, he will because he's excited, because they talk rubbish, and because they're in, he'll get chances. But it's where the chances are, and is he really gonna? I can't see. He ain't gonna beat nobody world level, especially not super middleweight. They're too good for him, too big. Yeah. You know, and then if he comes down to middleweight, beat beat he's been world less behind it, world level. Billy Joe beat him already. We beat him again. And I think I think it would kill him now to make the weight. As much as they talk rubbish about how they do the weight and he, he's on weight all the time and all this sort of rubbish, all this sort of thing. He's muscle bound, so you have to lose muscle, and that makes you weak. Yeah. You know, so we, so we're saying that. So he's coming back down to middleweight. Who's he fought? Okay, he might fight Billy Joe. We know it's a big seller because uh, they don't like don't like each other. But he loses to Billy Joe again. You know, you lost to the same person twice, and arguably he's not. He's not the ranked number. Well, he's not ranked number one in the division. The Golovkin is. So then, what do you do? Well, you fight Golovkin, you get battered. Like, so again, you're not good. So what? Where do you go? Like, you, you, you can't look at. You can't. You can't just come off a loss and go straight into. European or even British fights. You have to earn it. Do you know what I mean? So like, listen. If the money is big enough to fight you, I'll fight him. I'll deal with that nonsense. But. Unless there's massive, what, I don't know, understand who, why anybody domestically would want to mix with him because he's just a pain in the ass. No, quite honestly, and 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 they've proved themselves now that they've bullshitted their way to where to where they were, thinking he's world champ. You know, so talking the way they've talked and all the rest of it, and you know, okay, he got the IBO world title, but who did he beat to get that? Uh, Eleven and novice. And then he defended against Arf Abraham, who's like 45 years old, something like that. You know, Arf Abraham's a good fighter in his day, but he passed it. And they come over and they never fought out of Germany. When he's like, what you got to look at is look at the facts. He never fought outside of Germany when he was um, in his prime. And so why did he come over to fight you back in the UK? It just wouldn't have happened if he'd, just wouldn't have happened if he'd, um, if he did real aspirations of, of beating you back. He'd come to survive and get the money, and that's what he did. So look, I just think that. They've over, they've over called, over shouted and over talked about themselves in the Eubank club, and they've, they've had a, a hard reality when they're, you know, losing to Groves because he lost well to Groves. Groves out boxing and and, pr and hurt him as well, you know, nailed him a couple of times, and uh, that which is understandable. Groves can really punch, <laughs> you know. I'm not, I'm not saying he can't, hit, he can, he can whack, but uh, I think they've got to reassess where they go. And uh, but look, I've just said loads of stuff about them. And that's why they sell, because yeah. you just you can't help it. You can't help it. <laughs> you can't help it. You're talking points, and so yeah. Now they can they can do it the hard way. Now they can do it the hard way, like everybody else in the British boxing got to do, to become mandatory, to do the rest of it, and earn earn them earn their stripes.
it was up to me, everybody's saying, no, nah, I ain't fighting him unless he's mandatory. And make him do it the hard way. Make him take lesser payday. Make him do things. Promoters ditching. Boycott him. But, that, but that's my... But that's because I've had a... Because I had a, a, a thing where I was going to fight him. And uh, it was all signed and sealed and everything like that. And then they pulled out and left me in a shit situation. And... Um, and, it, and for a long time, you know, there's not an effect to that in, in, in me and in the way I fought and in, in things. So there's not an effect of, of him pulling out and what that did to my career and where it, where it lodged everything. So I'll be quite happy to not deal with them again. But, you know, money changes everything. <laughs> oh, mate, it always does. Tom, is there anything you want to say to your sponsors and your fans out there? Uh, massive thank you to you know all my fans. I know that it was hard for you to get, well, near impossible to get tickets for that for the last fight, but a lot of you managed to pay over the odds and come. Um, so big big thank you to you and big thank you to all the support that you gave me online on social media and and Facebook and the rest of it. And also massive thank you to my sponsors. TX Odds, UK Display Stand, JS Wright, Ringside Online, and uh, all car leasing. You know, without them, the honest, the honest truth is, it's, I couldn't have trained as a professional for this last fight. I couldn't. So, you know, give me the backing they've given me. It's, it's put me in a, put me in a great position going to the fight. Obviously, the performance spoke for itself. So, massive thank you to my sponsors. Everybody, it's really happy, but summer. Nice one, mate. Well, I think Tommy Langford said it all today. Uh, what he said about his uh, British title defence is spot on. You know what I mean? Uh, he the, the first the first six rounds were closed, but yeah, I'd agree with him. Look, he, he was he was doing the more the better work in the rounds. Uh, he took it on the later rounds easy anyway. Um, asked him about the domestic uh, tussles against maybe Cunningham. Robinson, well born. Uh, somehow, I, I, I think they have to do something to uh, warrant um, getting these shots now. Uh, I thought, I think, I think Craig's done enough to warrant getting a British title shot. But um, with him losing um, in that African uh, against the African uh, bloke um, in Manchester, that put him back. But um, fingers crossed, one of them gets. Uh, a British title shot shot against um, Langford uh, maybe this year sometime, but uh, Tommy's looking on and he's looking forward to uh, uh, moving up to European titles, uh, maybe world titles, and uh, he, he comes across very knowledgeable about boxing. And uh, if you watched uh, his fight um, last week, he, he's a very very good boxer and he's more than capable of a uh, you know. Um, competing at that level um, I'm looking forward to seeing what Tommy Langford does this year and hopefully he gets a few fights in this year uh, I'd also like to thank uh, Broadway Plaza Casino for uh, having, having us there at their uh, their new bar Ralph's um, it's, that's right next to the casino lovely place if you're up there have a look bang on um, let's see what happens in the uh, 2018 for Tommy Langford. <laughs> 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 <laugh